Hey guys, Mike Tierney here with Princess Auto. Welcome to Tech Tips with Mike T. We're talking about how to get more life out of your engine by doing some very simple maintenance. So we're going to talk about how to change the oil and why. We're also going to look at the air filter and make sure that that's clean. And then we're going to have an inspection with the spark plug. And if it needs to be changed, we'll change that. All right, we've got our engine set up a little bit higher than our drain bin. We've also got some new oil. Um, I'm using a 10 millimeter wrench. That's what it requires on this model. And I've got a funnel so that when we do go to refill the oil, we won't be dripping everywhere. All right, so the first step is we're just gonna remove the dipstick. Um, keep in mind that a lot of engines out there have a dipstick or a port to pour into on either side of the engine, and they may have um, another plug that you can you know, use uh, for the oil um, discharge on the other side. So depending on where your motor is um, located and maybe there's frames that are, you know, involved, uh, basically it gives you options on either side. So we can see that the oil is pretty dirty um, and uh, it would definitely be time to change the oil. So here's our dipstick um, that threads down in. And uh, when we go to put the oil back in, I'll kind of explain where, how and how high the oil should be within the thread structure. All right, now that we've got that open, we're going to go to removing the drain plug. So make sure that we're going in the right direction. We'll loosen it off to the point where we don't need the wrench. And we're going to capture the oil as best we can. And we'll let that drain for a few minutes and then we'll reinstall the plug once it's uh, stopped dripping. All right, now that it's stopped dripping, uh, we can you know, proceed on putting the drain plug back in. First, you wanna make sure that you're cleaning off your drain plug. You don't want any debris or anything like that getting in the threads and then that could possibly get in your engine. And uh, just make sure that your porting is you know, cleaned off especially if it's on a piece of equipment like a, you know, a lawnmower or something where you might have grass and you know, grime all around it. You do want to keep this fairly clean to prevent any contamination inside. And then you just simply go the reverse order, just nice and snug. You don't have to make it too tight. Just keep everything nice and tidy. As you're filling, add a little bit, then check it, add a little bit, then check it. And then you should start to see the clean oil come up to the bottom of the threads, and that's about right. Then you're gonna to wanna to start the engine up and uh, let it run for a minute or two, and then check it again, just because you know, you're oiling, new oil is gonna go through the, uh, the crankcase. So that's basically your process. So we're gonna kinda of just fill up a little bit here. So I'm just gonna add the funnel in. And some of these places are gonna be super awkward. You do, uh, you know, a funnel with a, um, uh, you know, a hose going to it, just so you can get more upright. Um, you know, a really small funnel is probably going to be a, a really awkward thing to do. So just a little bit at a time. You can see that it's nice honey-colored oil going in. So just to check it, we're just going to. Crank it in, let it sit for a sec. And I can start to see, you know, in the shine that we're just under the full mark. So I'd probably leave it there for now. Um, I'd run the engine for a couple of minutes just to get that oil moving through the, the crankcase. And then I'd go back and recheck it just to make sure I don't have to top it up. Um, at this point, I'd be happy with that. And uh, basically that's as simple as your oil change. So really it only takes a few minutes, but again, this is a water pump, so it's really accessible. Um, if you've got it in a, you know, a, a pressure washer frame or something that's, you know, a little harder to change, it'll take some time. But again, it only takes a couple of minutes to do. So um, this should be done, like I said, eight hours prior for break-in period. And then every couple hundred hours after that, depending on your usage of that, that equipment. So um, I like to do an oil change uh, right before the end of the season. 
That way if there's any moisture that was put in by hot, cold, hot, cold, uh, maybe some moisture got in through a breather. So however that can happen, because the, you know, the, the oil can sweat. Um, if I store it, I wanna make sure that the oils in there doesn't have any water molecules to freeze up and cause any sort of issues. So I like to change it at the end of the season. Um, some people may wanna change it at the beginning of the season. That's all preference. Personally, I just try to get as much, any chance of water outside of the oil and that'll help protect you and prolong the internal workings of your, your engine. And that's how you do an oil change on an engine. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the spark plug. Now, you know, you don't have to change a spark plug out every so many hours. Um, you do want to inspect them. Uh, maybe you're finding that your engine is running a little bit, uh, you know, misfiring in that, so you definitely want to check it. But if you're doing an oil change and you're doing some maintenance, um, basically just have a look at the spark plug. So we're gonna kind of dive in. You do need to take the spark plug cap off, and then you're gonna need a spark plug tool, and um, basically, there's sockets out there. Uh, many of the engines, if you've bought them new, come with a spark plug removal um, um, tool. So, you know, use that if that's what you have or a, uh, or a socket. Uh, it's impossible to get a wrench in there, um, but you do want to be careful that you don't mess up the threads. The threads are really important to be careful of. On removals, not so bad, but when you do put it back in, that's where you're going to have to be really careful to Make sure that you align those threads properly before you really tighten it down. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is remove the boot. So while you're doing that, you can also inspect the spark plug cable. At times, this can wear. Um, it is between typically a exhaust um, system and uh, you know it can get burnt, it can wear, it can crack. So make sure that there's no exposed wire that goes through this rubber boot into your spark plug cap. So if it's good, just continue on. So I've got a spark plug tool here. Um, you do have to go down quite often. They're down recessed. Um, basically, you're just going to need to crack it and thread it out. Now, all spark plugs are not made equally. Some have longer threads, some have shorter threads. So on visual, first visual, um, basically, we're looking at the electrode, um, the hook on the spark plug, um, and that's where you're going to get a spark when it ignites. Um, is there major carbon buildup? Um, is the spark plug um, electrode turned a, kind of a bright, um, rusty color? Um, that means that it's super hot and uh, it may be time to replace. In this one, um, there's not a lot of carbon buildup. The electrode still looks in good shape. Um, our threads look pretty good. Um, typically, I would maybe just take a rag and just kind of clean it off. You can clean it off with your hands. And you can see that but just by doing that, I don't have a lot of carbon deposit on there. So um, I would just think, okay, this one could go back in. Now, I do have a spark plug that probably would need to be uh, replaced. So um, this is a shorter off a different engine, but definitely um, you can see how much more carbon buildup you on the uh, on the electrodes as well as you can start to see the electrode go from a nice bright white ceramic to it's starting to change a little bit of color so um, this one here i definitely would uh, replace um, there's quite a bit of oil debris on this one and uh, you know if you get too much oil on them they won't fire properly um, so this one would be replaced if I was doing my normal maintenance and I would, uh, this, in this case, we can put the original one back in. So that's just simply by starting it by hand. It can be awkward if you've got large hands. Um, they are in awkward places. You do want to make sure though, when you're attaching this, that you do line those threads up. Uh, once you've got them started for three or four threads, then you can go and uh, don't put the ratchet or the, you know, the handle right on. Just slowly bottom it out. It'll only take a few turns. And then don't over tighten these. Just give them a, like a nice little snug. Once you've done that, go and reattach the boot. Make sure it clips in. And that's as simple as changing your spark plug. 
All right, so kind of the last thing on the list for just regular maintenance is our air filter. So we want to inspect this probably more frequently than doing the oil changes and the spark plugs. This thing here is going to see all of the atmospheric debris come in, and this is really what's protecting your engine. So um, it's really as simple as just taking off. Typically, they have a nut on top, so we'll just undo it until it comes off. And then we've just got a plastic housing. Most of them are plastic. So um, the first thing I typically do is look inside. Um, you know, if it's been sitting for a period of time, um, you know, mice and, and whatever can get in there and start building up debris, or if you've got long clippings or anything like that, you, you know, you do want to kind of make sure that that's cleaned out. Um, you can take a blow gun, whatever that looks like to you, but I can just simply wipe this out and set it aside. Now we have our filter element. Um, it's held in place again by another nut. And uh, we'll just take a second to undo that. You do want to make sure that, um, you know, w when you're maintaining these, that one nut is not going to hold everything together. I know it might take a few seconds to undo two nuts, but definitely you want that to sit in place. Um, you don't want the filter to be loose inside your, um, your housing, and uh, you want it to be held properly. So it's really simple. Um, this is our filter element. A lot of them have a rubber um, basic plate on the bottom. It helps just to kind of keep it in place. And uh, quite a few of them have this foam pad. So we can simply just take the foam pad off. Um, I'm inspecting it here. There's not a lot of debris on this. Um, obviously, this is a water pump, so it's not going to see something like, um, you know, a lawnmower or a piece of concrete equipment. But, you know, if, if there is some debris in the air, it will, the fine particles and the large particles will attach, and then the finest particles will go through your filter. So you can see that it's a pleated element. Um, it is hollow inside, and there's pleats. It's designed to trap in and then not allow them to come back down through into your um, your carburetor. So just do a visual inspection. If uh, this has all kinds of oil marks on it, or it might smell like fuel, maybe you were dumping some fuel, flooded the system, maybe you dumped it in um, and through the carburetor and it can soak into your, uh, your filter, um, you may want to consider replacing that because that's really not effective anymore. Um, if it's really condensed with dust and part particulate, you might just want to go and buy a new one. They're only a few dollars and just replace it. So if you've got a lot of debris and it's just loose, you can just simply take it, bang it on the, you know, the desk in this case or on the curb, whatever it is that you're working there, and just kind of knock off the loose bits. And then you just take a blow gun from the inside and blow out any of the residual debris that might be trapped in that filter. If it looks good, just reinstall the foam fitting. Just make sure that it's seated on properly. Um, have a look at where your housing is. You know, in this case, we can see that there's, you know, just some debris um, that we don't want to get into so inside the, uh, the carburetor. So we just kind of either take a rag or just kind of, you know, clean it up as best as you can. That way we prevent any kind of foreign material going into the, uh, directly into the carburetor, which will cause us issues later on down the road. So we're just going to simply reinstall. Just make sure that it's seated properly. We're just going to basically thread our one nut on first, all the way down. And, you know, you don't have to bury these things to the point where you can't get them back off. They just need to be snug to create a nice seal and reinstall your cap. Make sure that that's sitting down. And that is your air filter check and change. Well, that's it for Tech Tips with Mike T. We'll see you next time.